whether it was through the primaries or as we prepare to uh, head into November 3rd, uh, 34 some days left. But I'm really excited today because we have some special guests with us here. We have Michelle Kwan and Maya Harris, who everyone knows. Um, and we also have some of my amazing colleagues at all different levels of government. You know, these are colleagues that are true advocates and fighters for our AAPI community here in New York. Colleagues that supported different presidential candidates, colleagues that represent different parts of the state but we know what is at stake for our community. And we're so thankful to each and every one of them uh, that they have been working so hard to make sure that this president uh, is evicted on November 3rd. So just, you know, I'm Congresswoman Grace Meng. I represent parts of Queens, New York. Again, thank you to each and every one of you for being here. As a reminder, there is a chat box. Um, most of you probably know how to use that. Feel free to interact with each other on the chat box. Feel free to ask questions or post comments uh, in the chat box. At 7 p.m., we will say farewell temporarily as we head into a phone bank. We are calling AAPI voters in battleground states. We have been for many months and we'll continue to do so. And many of you have already volunteered to begin tonight. So thank you so much. Um, you know, brief introduction. I was born and raised in Queens, New York. My parents were immigrants that came to this country in the early seventies. I never thought that I would get involved in politics or ever run for office. Uh, I never thought that I would get involved with the Democratic Party and the DNC. But I realized as we uh, lost the 2016 election and in the weeks, months and years afterwards that our party needed to do a better job at listening to our various shared communities, that there were many communities that did not feel sufficiently heard and represented by our party. And so I got more involved and I'm so thankful for leaders like Bell Leong Hong, who is the chair of our AAPI caucus at the DNC. I wanna give a shout out to our local leader here in New York, Chang Seto, who uh, consistently uh, gives us, many of us guidance um, here in the state of New York and helps out with uh, politics here. Um, and you know, I'll tell you, when I when, when my first trips as a DNC officer was to Georgia, when John Ossoff was running for Congress, and as I headed to Georgia, I heard a lot of awesome feedback on the ground. And that was because for the first time in a long time, the DNC hired organizers that came from the local communities uh, and neighborhoods and people who spoke their languages and understood the communities. And even though John Ossoff lost that race, the Democratic Party and the progressive ecosystem in Georgia uh, through coalition building, registered over 8,000 Democrats. And that had uh, helped pave the way for amazing leaders like Lucy McBath uh, to win seats in Congress and help the House regain the majority. Stacey Abrams also ran for governor there and helped triple the Asian American turnout in the state of Georgia. So that is just one example of how much can be accomplished when we are just paying a little bit of attention and investing within our AAPI communities. And I don't have to tell all of you how hurtful this administration has been to this country, how many families this president and his administration has broken up, how many hearts have been broken, how many lives have been lost from the Muslim ban that he instilled to uh, the kids at the border, to the women who are literally forced to undergo and get hysterectomies at the border, to how he handled the coronavirus pandemic. And we in New York, every single one of my colleagues on this call fought tooth and nail to help save their constituents. And we all witnessed and watched as this president stood by and his administration ignored our pleas for help and left fellow Americans for dead. So there is so much at stake and New Yorkers, especially the New Yorkers on this call in our AAPI community, 
you guys know what is at stake. Every single day, this administration wakes up and thinks of new ways to target our communities and make people that look like you and me feel like we are not truly American enough. And last night at the debate, if we ever needed any further proof, the president who failed to condemn white supremacy uh, confirmed that. And so I'm so thankful to each and every one of you. You know, a lot of our federal Congress members have adopted certain battleground states. As I mentioned before, we're calling into Wisconsin tonight, starting at 7 p.m. The number of eligible Asian American voters in almost every single one of the battleground states outnumber the number of votes that Democrats lost by in 2016. So our community can make a difference. Our community can be that margin of victory and literally help put this country back on track, help restore integrity to the White House and help save lives again. So I want to, again, thank all of you for being here. Special thank you to my colleagues for taking time out of their super busy schedules. I'm so honored to be on this call with them. Um, now I want to turn it over to someone who really needs no introduction, Michelle Kwan, who is a two-time uh, Olympic medalist and who has been so gracious in using her platform to strengthen the Democratic Party, make sure that our AAPI voices are being heard in the party and that we are helping to win back the White House. Uh, Michelle Kwan. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Meng. Um, always a pleasure to see you next time in person with your family. Uh, and always thank you so much for leading the charge. Um, uh, so wonderful to also be with such incredible AAPI representatives, uh, and also with each and every one of you who tuned in. Um, it's hard to believe that there are only 34 days left, 34 days to election day, and there's so much to do. Um, I always think of sports analogies, where, and, and I see this as a marathon. It always has been a marathon, and we are at the last two miles of the race. So let's, let's keep up um, as, uh, Congresswoman Meng said, uh, the AAPI community can really make the difference here. And as you saw in yesterday's debates, uh, there is only one candidate who is equipped to take on the challenges our country faces and who has demonstrated the temperament and leadership our country is really looking for. Uh, certainly, Vice President Biden and Senator Kamala Harris are really a dynamic duo. Uh, they are ready to tackle the work that is needed to heal our country on day one of a Biden and Harris administration. I just like saying that Biden Harris administration. Uh, as you know, representation matters uh, and we should want our elected officials not to not just look like us, but to also speak to with and for us. Uh, I know that every little girl can see a little bit of themselves in Senator Harris, especially for a young black and Asian girl, woman of color across the country uh, who dreams of serving their country too and, and hoping that they can in their own way, um, you know, be part of serving their country. I love what Kamala has said on the campaign trail about her mother and Maya Harris will be joining that her mother used to tell them, don't sit around and complain about things do something, which is exactly what drives Kamala every single day to fight for all of us. I'm sure that's what driving Maya, who's on this call, could do attest to that um, and what she is doing every single day as well. What an amazing and brilliant family. Uh, you know, these elections I, I, are very personal. Um, I, I think personal for each and every one of you who, who jumped on a call with such urgency um, to help you know, Vice President Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, on the campaign trail, I, I often think of my parents who immigrated to the United States with nothing. Um, the idea that if you work hard, play by the rules, that your dreams can come true, really chasing after the American dream, that someday you can even be an Olympic ice skater, you know? Um, to me, that's, that's what's at stake in these elections. Um, we have a president that's not fighting for anybody but himself. Um, we have, on the other hand, Joe Biden, who continues to serve over 40 years in public service and fights for everybody. Um, this also means fighting for the AAPI community and building upon Obama Biden initiatives on AAPIs and strengthen the Pacific Island Task Force. 
uh, the Biden campaign is is making real historic investments uh, in the AAPI outreach from staff hires to media buys to voter outreach. We are doing this because we recognize the importance of the Asian American vote in key battleground states. Uh, but still we have a lot of work to do and we need all of you to jump on board and to volunteer. Also, I have to mention before I forget that there's a phone bank tonight at 7 p.m. So after this call is over, you have 30 minutes to get a snack and then you can join the phone bank. Um, but during this election, uh, we are making real, like I said, uh, big investments, seven figure investments on reaching the AAPI community and voters through paid advertisement in TV, print, radio, media outlets, you name it, we're, we're investing there. Um, the investments completely, I mean, I completely dwarfs the media ad buys in previous presidential campaigns. Uh, so to be sure we're, we're doing as much as we can. Um, this year, the campaign's investments also extended to hiring Asian American Pacific Islander outreach directors in battleground states to ensure that our efforts are as specific to the communities that we are trying to reach. As of today, I can say that the campaign has hired AAPI outreach directors in Nevada, Arizona, Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Lastly, uh, our efforts to reach the AAPI voters have expanded partly, you know, thanks to vastly improved A AAPI data, which allows us to be better identify Asian American voters. And additionally, our data allows us to further identify AAPI voters by ethnicity, which allows us for the first time to speak to voters in the language they speak. Uh, so given our expanded outreach effort in Asian American communities, now more than ever, we will need as many volunteers um, from our communities to call text voters in battleground states. Uh, we know that Trump you know, plans on disrupting our democratic process through disinformation uh, and voter suppression and everything that he comes out of his mouth. Um, now more than ever, we need your help in getting the right info to AAPI voters everywhere. Uh, as we know, like uh, Congresswoman Meng said, we could really make the difference in this election um, in a close swing states like North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. So get involved, request your mail or ballot, vote early, encourage your friends to vote. I tell, I encourage you to hound them, badge them, give them that you know, same talk that I'm giving you, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling a few of my family members that are little stragglers. Um, I'm texting them like, like the group family chain. Yes, you better believe it. These next 34 days, they're not going to stop hearing from me. <laughs> we have to be, you know, making sure we turn the tide. Um, us AAPS can be the margin of victory. So we must be, there's too much at stake in these elections. And it's important that our stories and lived experiences of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are hurt. So uh, let's do this, let's win, let's focus. And we got this. Let's go for the gold. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much. Next, I'm honored to introduce someone who is not just my own state senator here in New York City, um, but he's someone who has truly been a trailblazer, the first Asian American ever elected to citywide office uh, in the city of New York. Uh, he personally encouraged me and fought for me when I had the opportunity to run for Congress. You can literally see him biking, running, even flying throughout our city, Senator John Liu. Thank you, Congress member. Great to see you and thank you for putting this together. This is a really awesome gathering. You look at all the meet, the people in this meeting. This is this is really a feat to get all these people. Belle, awesome to see you. You look marvelous. Thank you. Belle is like the mother of the democratic movement in the Asian American community all around the country. Great to see you, Belle. You got a great room there, in fact. Thank and I, I am I I am like speechless. Like I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm in a meeting with my gold medal Olympian, Michelle Kwan, who we all watched her. Uh, it seems just like yesterday, but you know, it's it's actually been a while. 
But nonetheless, Michelle, you have made us so proud because you've you've used your not only your celebrity status, but everything else you got to be a, a true Asian American activist. You've been a soldier on the front lines and on so many issues. And uh, I'm just really proud to be on the same the same event with you. Uh, this is, uh, um, you know, I've only got three minutes and Grace is already texting me. Be quick. I know. I'm just kidding. Somebody from your office is. But uh, look, it is um, it, it's I, I I don't think anybody on this call or watching needs me or anybody to tell them what a, an important election this is. There is no clearer choice between presidential candidates that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I dare say anybody has. So. Uh, we need everybody to come out to vote for Biden, Harris. And look, here in New York, we're pretty safe. We're going to be blue. There is no chance that we go for somebody who, uh, who, who says he left New York, but actually we kind of kicked him out of New York. All right. So what we need to do is get, in, get on the phone and text messages with our fellow Asian Americans in Wisconsin and then all the other states that Grace will bring us to. Let's get this done you know, I was an early supporter. I, I was rooting for somebody who is going to be the first Asian American vice president of the United States of America and so honored to be on with her daughter. Uh, but uh, this is somebody who, uh, after she becomes vice president, you know what's next. We'll, we'll have the first Asian American president of the United States. And boy, that will be a day to celebrate. But you know what? I'm looking forward to celebrating the first Asian American vice presidents. Get, let's get out there. And I think I'm within my time limit. And I want to give a shout out to my brother, my little brother, Kevin Thomas. I say a little only, a little not in size, little only in age. The first South Asian Americans elected uh, any to anything in the state of New York, Senator Ke Kevin Thomas, he's going to speak next. And just as he is the first South Asian American uh, we're gonna be we're gonna see the first South Asian and in fact the first Asian American elected to vice presidency. Kevin! Oh, and we and, and of course Ron has to bring his girls out. All right, so Kevin, no one's gonna be listening to you while the girls are <laughs> Cut your it's camera all of, assemblyman all of Ron Kim. <laughs> Am I next, Thank Grace, you. or is it someone else? Yes, but if I can say something for 10 seconds. Hi Olive, hi Hazel, welcome. Um, next, we have John already introduced Kevin, but I just want to emphasize that Kevin himself also has a really difficult race. So to the extent that folks on the call can be helpful to him, um, please let's reach out uh, as well. Senator Thomas, thank you for making history and thank you for fighting for our values. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman. Uh, it's such an honor uh, to be here to be invited to this you know you're a trailblazer uh thank you to uh big brother john lu who uh does not uh uh you know uh, he, he doesn't fat shame me a lot but uh <laughs> he he does when we are out in public only <laughs> thank you to all the leaders on this call a big thank you to michelle kwan for being a role model for my young daughter and it's also such an honor to share the screen with maya harris a fellow south indian like me uh it's just so great so I'm Senator Kevin Thomas. I represent the 6th Senatorial District here in Nassau County, Long Island. Following last night's debate, it can't be more clear what Donald Trump stands for. Hate, divisiveness, and disorder. Like all of you, I believe in the ideals our nation was founded on. Liberty and justice for all. And that means for everyone. We cannot and will not allow these ideals to be stripped away by corrupt self-interested politicians like Trump. You know, I'm of Indian descent, both of my parents are Indian, but I was born in Dubai and spent my early years there. I came to New York at the age of 10. My parents' only priority at the time was to survive, raise their kids, make them doctors, because that's what all Indian parents want their kids to be, and retire. Well, I became an attorney instead of a doctor. 
a legal service attorney, one that defends those without the means to pay. And I realized growing up in life, you have to give back more than you take in. And I wanted to make sure others can live a better life. So when I was when I won in 2018, I became the first Indian American to be senator here in New York and seating an incumbent who was in office for four decades. My constituency sought change and they got it. My colleagues and I were able to improve the lives of so many New Yorkers. We passed laws to protect our environment, protect child victims, help our immigrants. We increased funding to our schools to improve. We, we did so much to improve our healthcare system, to fund programs for our veterans, protect uh, women's right to choose, eliminate barriers to voting, increase funding for our roads and bridges, protect our communities from gun violence. You get the picture. We chose to serve the people. As you all know, November's election will be one of the most important elections in our lifetime. And that's why I'm proud to support Joe Biden for president, because not only does he have the ability to unite our country, he understands the unique challenges facing Asian Americans in the Pacific Islander community, alongside my favorite, Senator Pamela Harris, who when I heard she was picked, I think I jumped up in the air and my staff was like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> She's the perfect individual to fight for us because that's what she has done all her life. You know, I know they have the skills and the leadership to heal our divided nation and rebuild our country. We need to work harder now more than ever to get out the vote and elect Joe Biden and Camilla Harris. The future of our country depends on all of us, including our family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers registering and casting a ballot. We need our AAPI community to come out and vote. We are the fastest growing community in this country. We have individuals who are so successful, but have stayed away from politics. That's why I need your help to make them come out and vote. All right, we need volunteers tonight. Yes, you heard it, tonight in Wisconsin. You know, bring your friends, bring your family and neighbors, and let's go do this. Let's get to work. Let's get it done. We need our country back. We need morals back. And we are going to get the White House back this November. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, next, we have someone who is uh, who made history by being the first Korean American ever elected to the New York State Legislature. Uh, he is a rising star. He is a role model for my two boys uh, who are half Korean American. Uh, thanks, Ron, for always fighting for our communities. Asami Min Kim. Thank you, Congresswoman Grace Meng. Uh, thank you for putting this together. Uh, it is really hard to get all the Asian elected officials in the same meeting in New York City. So it's a miracle that you were able to put all of us together in a short time's notice. And again, it, it's such an honor to be joined by Michelle Kwan and Maya Harris. You're such a role model for so many people and so many young uh, people, especially people like my young daughters who you just saw. There was actually Autumn, my two-year-old, who outgrew <laughs> My middle child, she's a very big baby, so she's getting up there um, and very heavy. Uh, and, you know, I just want to say how important this meeting is, though. Uh, even though we have uh, 34, 34 days, Michelle, 34 days left, um, there is a serious uh, problem that I, we are seeing on the ground among Asian Americans and Asian American voters. Uh, there, there is an uptick of right-wingers who are trying to steal the message away from us, uh, leveraging the fear uh, on Asian American immigrants. And a lot of the workers, a lot of the tenants who are left behind, a lot of, lot of the people who don't have food on the table tonight, a lot of our constituents that we both know are still waiting for hours in the food pantry line. They're very susceptible to this type of fear mongering that's spreading um, among like, you know, the Asian uh, social mediums like WeChat and, and other platforms. Um, and, and I just, it is, it is something that's also very personal because I recognize uh, why people are scared, you know, and people like my uncle, uh, I think many of you know, uh, who died this year uh, at a nursing home. Uh, his name was Sung Kim. Um, and he was a U.S. Army captain uh, a dentist, one of the first dentists uh, of Korean descent in the city. 
uh, and he died alone um, as as a former uh, army veteran uh, with no one by him, no one by his side, uh, and he suffered uh, for weeks. Uh, and we're still going through that trauma. And I'm sharing that story because there are so many other Asians and Asian Americans who are going through that kind of pain and trauma right now, and they they're confused. And it takes an authoritative, fascist, racist person to come along and, and act tough and say, oh, we're gonna just fix everything with snap of a finger. And we're gonna play, we'll kick out the Mexicans. Well, Asian Chinese, you guys are good because uh, you're better than the blacks and Hispanics. That's the kind of a person he is. But unfortunately, when you're scared, um, you can fall prey to that kind of narrative. That's why this meeting that we're having today, all the leaders from different communities to go back to our constituents and tell them, no, we have to build solidarity. We have to stick up for each other. And we have to fight for those who are suffering and struggling every single day. And Trump is not going to do that for us. The only thing he cares about is himself, his profits, well, his lack of profits, according to his tax returns. But he is the most toxic, racist person that we could, anyone could just, we can't even imagine why he could he'd be in any public service. Uh, but that's the kind of character that we're dealing with. But we, sh we can't take him lightly. Like we need to go to our base, go to our constituents, go to our voters and get them re-engaged and get them on the phone banks and make sure that they understand that if we don't do this, all of our parents, all of our uh, grandparents, all of our struggles uh, will only get worse moving forward. Thank you, Grace, and let's get to work. Thank you, Assembly Member. Uh, next, we have someone who everyone knows, and I just want to take this opportunity, like so many Americans, to thank Maya and Kamala's parents and family for raising you all the way they did and sharing you all with the rest of this country. You know, while the president can't even condemn white supremacists last night, as we saw, um, Senator Harris uh, is the lead sponsor of a resolution in the Senate that condemns bigotry towards uh, Asian Americans. So this is our choice, guys. It's not a hard choice. <laughs> Um, but Maya, thank you for being here today. Maya is a well-known civil rights lawyer, public policy advocate, and is working overtime to make sure uh, we are restoring integrity to the White House. Thank you, Maya, for being here. Thank you for having me. You know, when you call me, I show up. So I'm very, very happy to be here and honestly, very honored to be here with so many esteemed AAPI officials in New York. This is really amazing. I uh, feel very honored to be in all of your company. And thank you to everyone who's showing up for this conversation um, because you are here literally to help save our country and our democracy from four more years of the failed incompetent leadership that people have been talking about, um, not just on this call, but I think we're all talking about this um, with our friends and our family and in our communities. Um, in failed incompetent leadership that literally our communities cannot bear another four years of, and it is no exaggeration. I mean, people are referencing already. I mean, we, we have more than 200,000 Americans who died due to Trump's mismanagement of the pandemic. And he says that coronavirus has affected virtually nobody. And 400,000, I did a um, roundtable conversation with AAPI small business owners last week, 400,000 small businesses have permanently closed and the businesses are disproportionately black and Latino and AAPI. And he says he's doing a really great job in the economy. And, you know, as Senator Thomas mentioned, I mean, not to mention how he's fueled this anti-Asian sentiment and behavior and has used his platform to spew racist terms like Kung Flu to describe COVID-19. And then of course, last night, his refusal, the refusal of our so-called commander in chief to condemn white supremacists um, in this country, something that we should be able to take for granted from our commander in chief um, that, 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 that they would condemn 
that um, type of, of belief and, and behavior. Um, and you know, one of the things that I was pointing out to some people today is let's not forget that he also did that in 2016 uh, when he refused to disavow the KKK and then later acted as if he didn't hear the question. And you know he knows exactly what he's doing. And so I think we're all here, um, as Senator Lou said, because the question is, what are we gonna do about it? We, we know what he's doing. What are we gonna do about it? And really, this is it. This is game time, as Michelle talked about. The, the election, it is very hard to believe, is only now a few weeks away, but that's election day. Uh, what's also important is that early voting has started already in some places and it's going to continue to start uh, soon in, in other places. And it is literally going to take all of us to bring this thing over the finish line. And so what's so important about gatherings like this is that we all now have to step up with every ounce of our being and not just critique what we're seeing, not just say enough is enough but really understand how important it is that now is the time to take action, to use our power to bring this awful administration to an end. And as some of the others said earlier, the thing that there that is, you know, goes without doubt is that AAPI voters can actually make the difference in this election. Like that is a fact. There is so much power in our community. And if ever there was a time for us to flex that muscle that we have, the power that we have, it is absolutely right now. And we absolutely deserve to have leadership in the White House that respects our communities, that will fight for our communities, that actually represents our communities. And we do have that opportunity with Joe and Kamala, you know, as people have talked about, to elect two people who have devoted their entire lives to public service, to making government work better for all people. And yes, as Senator Lou said, to elect the first ever person of Asian American descent as VP, the first black woman, the first madam vice president in our nation's history. I mean, so this is an exciting history making moment for our community, but even more importantly, it is about our future. And the thing about Kamala and Joe, and I think this is important as we talk to people out there, is that this is not just about Trump and that we need to get him out. Yes, we need to fire him. Yes, we need to evict him. We need to do that. But it also is about the future and being better than we were before. And the thing about Kamala and Joe is that they actually see people. They see people's struggles. They actually care and have compassion. You can see it in both of them. I can attest to it. Um, and they have actual plans, which is why we need to win this election and why even in the midst of all the challenges that we're facing, we are at an exciting crossroads where we have the power to put this country on a better path forward to a better future for our community and for our country. And so I just want to echo what everyone else has said about the importance of harnessing our power now, building the grassroots energy and momentum that I know we are absolutely capable of. You know, I was looking at um, our population in New York and thinking, just imagine the power if we could organize even a fraction of the nearly 2 million AAPIs in New York to not just vote in New York, but to sign up to make a few calls or send a few texts to reach people we need to reach in battleground states, whether it's Wisconsin tonight or Pennsylvania or Ohio or Michigan, to talk to our communities and as you know, Assemblymember Kim was, was, was referencing, in some instances to answer questions, to persuade people who may still be undecided, we can do that. Um, and to make sure folks are registered to vote and that they have a plan to vote. So I know that we can do this, I really do. So I encourage you, please join the Wisconsin Film Big tonight at 7.30. Don't hang up from this great event with all these honorable people and go off and do something else. Get, get back in it at 7.30 and do the phone bank. Join another phone bank if you can between now and election day. And so I'm just gonna close by saying thank you for all that you've already done. I know our Congresswomen mentioned that so many of you have already been working hard. Thank you for that. Um, but thank you also for all that I hope you will do over these next 34 days. Um, we are all so incredibly grateful, most especially Joe and Kamala. And as everyone else has said, now we just need to get this thing done. So thank you so much for having me tonight. And thank you, thank you for everything that you're all doing. 
Thank you so much, Maya. Next, we have someone who is relatively new in the government, but not really. She's such a rising star. I can literally feel her energy and compassion for her district and the people of New York through social media. Um, and she's just a fun person to hang out with. Uh, you, you too, John. <laughs> Assembly member Yuli New. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to um, our amazing Congresswoman Grace Meng for being able to put all of this together. As Ron said, it is hard to gather all of us in one room. It really is truly hard. Um, but I wanted to say that, you know, even though, um, you know, it's hard to gather all of us in one room, it's we're still such a small group, which is very um, upsetting because 13% of the New York City uh, community is actually Asian American. And uh, yet we only have, you know, 2% of the representation um, in our state legislature, even less than that in our city council and our Congress. And so um, I just wanted to say thank you for all of the work that folks here are doing. Um, I also, you know, had a little list of folks, even though Michelle's gone, uh, that texted me saying that they needed me to pass these messages on. One was my mother. She still wants Michelle as her daughter instead. Um, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, <laughs> In case she comes back to the recording, um, Michelle DePasses, hello, Maya. Um, and also, <laughs> and also David Kim says hello to Michelle. And I uh, just wanted to say that, um, you know, I still think that this is one of those moments when things are really, really, really pivotal. Um, not only is representation important, but uh, representation that looks like us is important as well. You know, my district was one of the first and one of the hardest hit by COVID-19 and it wasn't by the virus. It was by uh, xenophobia and racism. And uh, the rise in anti-Asian sentiments um, was really spread and uh, furthered by Trump. And he's been spreading racist, xenophobic and anti-immigrant uh, words. And uh, his agenda has been hurtful to our community in a way that, um, that has brought violence and pain. Uh, you know, people try to set people on fire. Uh, people have thrown people into subway tracks. People have punched people for wearing a mask, punched people for not wearing a mask. Um, you know, and this was, you know, acceptable to the president by calling the pandemic the Chinese virus or the China flu or Kung flu. Um, and he continues to target and divide our Asian American community. And that's just not acceptable. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was really lucky because I actually, my parents were immigrant parents and they moved around a lot because, um, you know, seeking educational opportunities, et cetera, for my father and um, trying to get upward mobility economically. Um, the first place that we moved to was actually Moscow, Idaho. We're not gonna talk about that one, um, but I also lived in El Paso, Texas. And I actually got to see the first woman um, governor of Texas. And her name was Ann Richards. Everybody knows who she is. Um, but you know, it was really interesting to see because seeing is believing. And I never knew that I even held um, that that internalized oppression in my own head. That I didn't know that women could be elected officials. Um, and and then when I moved to Washington State, I was actually um, an intern in the Washington State Legislature when Gary Locke became governor. And we saw the first Asian American governor um, ever. And, and that was uh, also a moment when it was really piv pivotal for me because seeing is believing and then knowing that um, we're going to have representation for the first time that somebody won't be uh, spreading xenophobic and racist verbiage um, in the White House would be amazing. For us and i just wanted to say that uh to remember you know if you're asian uh you know white supremacists hate us too <laughs> it's really important to vote right and it's really important to make sure that um before november 3rd we do whatever we can to make sure that everybody's ready for this election um you know we have to make sure that we are represented we have uh, had the least representation in all uh, of our state in every single ethnic group 
Um, and, and that's why it's important to make sure that our voice is heard this election. Um, it's important to make sure that we are voting. It's important to make sure that people know that the AAPI voice and the AAPI vote matters. And it is important to know that, you know, we are, uh, we are standing on the precipice of, of whether or not we're going to recover at all. And I think that uh, this is something that we all have to consider. Um, so many of our small businesses, so many of our um, our jobs are lost, um, and I just you know wanted to say that uh, the the economic turmoil is actually getting worse, and I think that folks uh, need to think about what that means for us and how uh, we can respond to that. And so I just wanted to emphasize how important again this election is. Um, why representation matters, and again, why seeing is believing. And right now we are seeing for the first time, um, the first South Asian to be able to be VP. Um, so I'm really, really excited. Thank you so much. And by the way, don't tell Kamala, but Maya is still my favorite hair sister. Don't add that. <laughs> Thanks, Yuleen. Um, next we have someone who has always fought so hard for her community and her district, prioritizing the needs of senior citizens, uh, affordable housing. When I ran for Congress, she came multiple times out to help me campaign. I'm just so thankful for her uh, leadership. Councilwoman Margaret Chin. Thank you, Cong Congressmember Grace Meg. And thank you so much for organizing this. And I think the, the most important thing that I, I feel um, from the energy of tonight is that we have to show the power of the AAPI community. One thing we gotta remember, we, our ancestor, helped build this country. This country would not be what it is if it wasn't for us. And we're part of this country, we are Americans. For centuries, they've been icing us out, but no, we are Americans too. And it is our job to help protect this democracy that we help build. For many of us, it was a long journey to get elected. It wasn't easy. And even for me, getting elected as a city councilwoman, um, it took a 20 years journey. John got in before I did, <laughs> but it's very hard because you register to vote, you face discrimination, they turn you away at the poll. That happened more than 20 years ago and many, many years ago, and it's still happening now. I think that for us, that we have to really energize our community, that we have the chance to make a difference and bring this victory home. We have a dynamic ticket, uh, Vice President Biden and Senator Harris, come on, this is the best we got and we gotta make it happen. Tonight, seven o'clock, the phone bank of Wisconsin. I mean, we have the language ability and the skill to really reach all the API community across this battleground state. And we gotta do our part to bring this victory home and to finally make sure that Asian American Pacific Islanders are recognized and respected. We need a president and vice president who brings the country together and not to divide us. So thank you to everyone and we need all of you to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Next we have Councilman Peter Ku who has fought so hard for his Flushing Queens community uh, and really is a self-made business person as well and understands the struggles of so many in our community. Councilman Ku. Thank you, Congressman, uh, Congresswoman, uh, Grace Man, and thank you for your organizing, organizing this event. Then uh, this is a good kickoff for AAPI to mobilize um, Asian Americans and other uh, Asian American and Pacific Islanders, uh, 
make sure that we go out to vote on election day. It's very important that everyone vote this year because we have been suffering four years too long. Every time our president opened the, uh, his mouth, um, we, we see we heard crazy things and he is not fit to be our president. Uh, he's not even fit to be anything, you know? So uh, I hope everyone in our community uh, and in the country, uh, especially AAPIs uh, will come out to vote for uh, our Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Harris. This is a very good team and uh, we vote for them. Uh, we'll have a better economy, uh, better, uh, better schools, better community, uh, uh, better uh, everything. So it's important for us that if you are tired of our man in the Oval Office, get rid of him, vote November 3rd on election days. Yeah, so I don't want to speak too long because I know we have to do phone banking soon. So thank you, Grace and all the other elected officials. And especially, uh, we want to thank uh, Michelle Kwan and uh, Maya Harris uh, for their leadership and their advocacy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Next, I'm honored to introduce our borough president, uh, president of our, our county here in Queens, the best county. Sorry, Yulene. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. Um, we're so proud of her. She's literally, literally been mobilizing her team in feeding so many of our constituents, making sure that they have <laughs> proper PPE as well. And I still hope she saves one of those awesome masks for me. Our first Asian American uh, borough president, Sharon Lee. Congress member, thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's good to see everyone. Um, I was listening earlier, you'll forgive me, I wasn't able to show my, uh, uh, my video earlier. Uh, I'm some, I think we're all double dutching a lot of Zooms these days, but um, you know, Senator Thomas said earlier, uh, he, he was talking about when he heard the news about Kamala, uh, I, I gotta say, I, I, uh, decorum went out the window. I was yelping. I was pounding my desk. It was, it was very, uh, it was, it was very real. Uh, it was very, very real. Um, but nonetheless, I think everyone has said, uh, why this election is so important. It's a heavy, heavy ballot. It is a heavy ballot. We have the pandemic on the ballot. We've got the economy on the ballot. We've got white supremacy on the ballot. We've got racial injustice and the re reckoning of racial injustice on this ballot. We've got free speech on this ballot. We've got forced hysterectomies, sterilization of immigrants. Uh, of women uh, in detention on the ballot. We've got the Supreme Court on the ballot. We've got detained children in cages on the ballot. We've, and uh, you know, with all of that, I, I believe uh, in what everyone was saying, uh, we have on the ballot as Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, we have um, uh, the, 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 the conditional existence as Americans that is on this ballot for me. Uh, and so, you know, to anyone who, you know, as we're phone banking, as we're getting out the vote, uh, you know, for folks who are just like, oh, I'm just one vote. And, you know, someone reminded me the other day, you say that you said that about a penny, right? You see a penny, you're like, oh, that's just one penny. Well, you add up all those pennies, you can make a dollar, you can make $5, you can make $100 with all those pennies, it can make an impact. Uh, and so thank you, Congress member, for getting all of us together. Good to see you, Belle. Thank you for sharing your speaking time with me. <laughs> We're very humbled by that. Um, but it is a heavy, heavy ballot. And so I'm grateful uh, to, to be on momentarily. And thank you for bringing us all together. Uh, and let's get this done. Thank you, Borough President. <clears throat> We're almost near the end as we begin to make phone calls. We have with us someone who's been virtually traveling the country. Actually, she has been traveling the country for years, encouraging and motivating our AAPI communities 
throughout the country, even in states where we might not have thought there were Asian American communities. And she has brought them together, convened them and empowered them. Bell is someone who has really been such a mentor to me. She gives me unsolicited advice and encouragement all the time, which I appreciate. Um, as the eldest child on both sides of my family, I don't get a lot of that. So I truly appreciate Belle and her heart and her, and her advice. Um, Chairwoman of the DNC AAPI Caucus, Belle Liang Hong. Thank you so very much, Grace. Um, so let me share with all of you that Grace is not only my partner at, uh, at the DNC, she is also my mentor and my good friend. And that's the title that I hold most dear to my heart. Um, this is so wonderful to see all of you on this call. You are all trail, trailblazers. Uh, I remember, so uh, my little secret is that I actually uh, went to college in New York. So New York is part of my, uh, in my blood as well. Um, and when I was in New York, there were not that many Chinese Americans in politics. In fact, there were none, no Chinese American or no Asian Americans in politics. So John Liu, you were a, a trailblazer back then. You still are a trailblazer. Um, each and every one of you is a trailblazer and um, uh, I am absolutely honored to be here with you. Um, I think uh, every all of the speakers have spoken about how important and why we're all here today, uh, right? Get, uh, get ready for the phone banking and uh, uh, getting out the vote. The, this race is absolutely critical. And uh, let me also share my little story about uh, what happened when I heard about uh, Kamala Harris being the, the, the selection for the Vice President of the United States. Um, in, my, in, my, um, in my talks around the country, I would always end up my speeches with, it is my dream that in my lifetime, I will see an Asian American president of the United States. My dream is being realized today. And so, you know, with the election of uh, Kamala Harris as the vice president, we're at the top of the ticket, we're at the table. But one of the things that I do want to encourage all of you is that what we've seen over the years, and Chung Sido and I have been fellow warriors for many years, um, one of the things that we need to make sure of is that these, uh, all of these network, all of these efforts that we put into place today to win this election in November, that it should continue, that needs to continue to make sure that we reelect all of the members on this on, on this call, but not only reelect you, but also to uh, elect new members in the of the API communities into the legislature, into the Congress, into the um, uh, councils, uh, at all levels of government. And yes, one day into the presidency of the United States, we have the vice president this time, we want the presidency as well uh, in the future. So in order for us to do that, we need to continue to build this. And I urge you all to please stay connected, to expand the network and to please keep uh, engaged. Um, I, would, I will end this by saying that, number one, I'm so very excited that there are uh, all of the, for all of you in New York right now. Uh, I want to make sure that um, as we move into, uh, after, uh, in, into the election that we're all energized and that um, uh, we not only go out to vote, but also get our friends and neighbors out there to vote. And then the day after election, we start planning on uh, electing the next uh, 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 in the next election cycle. So with that, thank you so very much, Congresswoman, and thank you very much for being my friends, all of you. Thank you, Belle. Uh, before I turn it over to Amit, I want to acknowledge two of our local party elected officials, our district leader, Jenny Lowe, and our state committee woman, Sandra Ung. Um, next, I'd like to invite Amit Johnny, who literally has been coordinating events all across the country and has done it so gracefully and seamlessly. Thank you for your work. Thank you so much for that, Congresswoman, and thank you so much for having me here today. And I just want to say, say a special thank you to you for all your great work um, for, I know, 
we're constantly on the campaign trail and you're literally there with us every single day. Actually, right after this at 7 p.m., you're going to be joining us as well uh, as a participant and speaker for our phone bank. So thank you for that. Um, we have 34 uh, days left to go, um, but there's so much work still left to, to be done. And like the amazing speakers before us have uh, mentioned and have stated, there's so much on the line this uh, election day. Um, and, you know, really the API community can really be the difference across uh, many of the states that the Congresswoman mentioned, the battleground states. Um, so what we're actually doing is API to API phone banks. Uh, as well as disaggregated phone banks. So we're doing Korean to Korean, Filipino, Filipino, Chinese to Chinese, and so, so much more. So we really need your help. Um, please join us right after this call. We have a, a national API program in phone banking. Uh, jo uh, we'll, we'll be sharing the link in the chat box as well, but we really hope you can join. Um, if you aren't already involved with the campaign uh, for APIs for Biden, uh, you can do so by just texting uh, API to 30330. Again, that's API to 30330. And again, we hope you'll join us right after this call for our API funding. Thank you so much. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you, Amit. And once again, I just want to thank everyone for being uh, on this call. I know that all of you are super busy. You know, we in New York have the second largest API community in the country. Like Maya Harris said, we truly could make the difference by taking a little bit of time, each and every one of us, to reach out to these battlegrounds. Again, in most of the battlegrounds, including Wisconsin, the number of eligible API voters outnumber the number of votes that we lost by in 2016. So we can make it happen. Um, so thank you to each and every one of you. If you ever need to be connected or want to connect with someone on the Biden team, um, we're happy to facilitate. Um, but thank you, everyone. Be safe, and I will see you soon. Thank you, Grace. Thanks, John. Thank you.